George, we're here in Crete. It's good to see you again after too long. Um, uh, conference physics of fine tuning. Uh, fine tuning has been one of the themes that I've followed for many decades. Uh, in the past, it's been philosophers and those scientists who engaged in the science religion discussion that fine tuning has been uh, been an issue. Uh, but what's here is interesting is that it's really mainstream cosmologists, yeah. and we're dealing with with fine tuning in, in that respect. You you've uh, kind of existed in all these worlds. Uh, so uh, what, what's your view? What's happening here? Um, I think it's become apparent to a lot of, as you say, mainstream cosmologists that there are interesting questions to be asked here. And we've seen some of them in, the, in this conference, like, for instance, what are the kinds of conditions which will lead to a stellar system with habitable planets? And there's very interesting stuff there. Um, you, you want planets with... with probably you want planets with water and that happens only at certain distances from the central star and so on. And of course a lot of the driving of this is to some extent given by the huge number of extrasolar planets which have now been found which kind of has driven the attention of astronomers onto the question of life in the universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so much of what I've heard here in terms of uh, fine-tuning deals with physics parameters, particularly in cosmology, the cosmological yeah. constant. You've actually wanted to extend the concept of fine-tuning into biology. Yes. So uh, m most of the fine-tuning has been what variation of the physics parameters would allow galaxies to exist, uh, stars to exist, planets to exist on the one hand. Secondly, heavy elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, which are crucial to our existence as physical beings and then water and planets with water. So that's what it's focused on. Um, but none of that actually gets to life itself. Now for life itself, I'm a carbonist. I believe that life is based in carbon for a whole lot of reasons. And you have to have a whole lot of stuff for life itself to come into existence. And what, what this is the link between um, physics, chemistry, and uh, biochemistry. And the key thing is what enables biomolecules exist. And there's two really important biomolecules. The one is DNA and RNA, which have got, had a lot of publicity. The ones which are in a sense much more important and haven't had such publicity are the proteins. And in fact, the proteins are the ones that actually do the work. And DNA and RNA are only important because they Make create the proteins. Right, right, right. So all of that publicity is completely <laughs> misleading. <laughs> the question is, if you shift the fine structure constant, DNA winds up on itself in a certain pattern. Will you destroy that ability to wind up and those matchings to take place? That's one kind of question. And the fine, the fine, uh, uh, fine structure fine constant. Yeah, fine structure constant is uh, a test of will affect that. And the, and the neutron... Well, define the, the fine structure constant. Oh, it will, roughly it's, it's, the, it's the strength of the elect electromagnetic force. Okay, okay. Um, and then the, the, the ratio of the electron to the proton mass is another one which comes in and affects these because these affect the shapes of molecules. And then the second one is a huge amount of stuff which goes on in biology. It depends on detail the lock and key mechanism of, of biology where um, molecules fit together and cause conformations to change and so on. And in particular, the brain is based on voltage-gated ion channels. And in those ion channels, when the voltage changes, it lets ions through and yeah, then right, it, it right, doesn't. Right. The question is, if you shift the fine structure constant or the, the electron-proton ratio, will that stuff still work? Right. And that's a fascinating area which has hardly been touched. And, and what, what type of conclusions, what type of uh, range of, of, of estimates are there? Well, for the moment, um, what we've been able to do is locate some work on this on, well, first hydrogen, we've done some calculations, the hydrogen molecule, but then on water. And it looks as if you have to make quite a substantial variation in the fine structure constant for water to be significantly affected more probably than the amount you have to change it in order to alter the nuclear synthesis. So it looks maybe as if the, uh, the physics results will give you a stronger limit 
on fine tuning. Tighter limit, yeah. Yeah, the, than, than the biology. But this is a very, very tentative conclusion, and it will require a lot of development to okay. see if that's So what true. I find interesting is you're now developing the concept of the fine tuning in biology and, and using the from physics. But what you're doing is you're, you're using some of the exact same uh, information in terms of uh, ratio, weight ratios between yeah. proton and electron, or, or uh, yeah, the, we're, the we're, strength of the electromagnetic. We're using the 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 the, the, um, the Schrödinger equation in yeah. detail for molecules. Right, right. So um, I, I have to ask you this: a, a, a good friend of yours and mine at different times, uh, John Leslie, has proposed that one of the uh, ideas of fine tuning is that what people do is they look at it in in in, in only one area. But he says that because fine tuning will have an effect in, in radically different areas yeah. at the same time. In, in physics and now in biology, he yeah. would say in, in, it affects different things, that that makes the fine-tuning argument stronger. Yeah, it does make you, it stronger. You, no, you agree, agree with that? Because yeah. that's controversial, I mean. <laughs> oh, well, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> so, I mean, th th that, um, you know, he would say uh, is, you know, pushes the... Um, P pushes the implications of this pretty strong because if each if each um, uh, uh, fine tuning uh, uh, locus only worked by itself, that would be yeah. one level. But if here the same yeah. kind of fine tuning has to work in two radically different Correct. areas, yes. you, you know that significantly strengthens the philosophical implications of what that means. Yeah. And I, 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 I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I'm not, I'm not sure I agree with that, um, and I'm, uh, because I, I'm not sure if the data the data would, would would hold that. But but what you're saying in biology, even if the, even if the biological limits were, were were wider, it's still a limit. Yeah, it's still a limit. Yes. And the more limits you have, it's like a pr probability. In, in, but, yeah, know. but but it's a, it's a it's a it's a rather disturbing limit because it's saying in some sense that the laws of physics had the for knowledge of biology written into it, if you, if you say, or the possibility of biology yeah. written into it. And, and that's sort of John's point a little bit to, to some degree. And that, that's a rather strange kind of statement. <laughs>